A recently added feature to GuruFocus.com is the discount cash flow function. And what this does is allow users to value stocks based on the discount cash flow valuation method. To use it, simply enter a stock symbol in the search box in the top left corner of the page and then scroll down to the heading that says DCF calculator. Now if you are evaluating a stock from a different tab, you can also just scroll over and select the DCF tab from the current screen you are on. Now the discount cash flow calculator uses a handful of default values for each of the variables and I want to go through those. So the first thing is the earnings per share and the earnings per share in this case we're using Microsoft reflects the earnings per share of the last full year of earnings. So on the 10 year financials you'll see that not under the trailing 12 months but the previous fiscal earning year. Secondly it looks to estimate the earnings growth rate for the next 10 years and the default value is the earnings growth rate of the previous 10 years. Now, if you choose to do so, users can change this rate and the fair value of the stock will be immediately reflected by your change. The second component of the calculator is the terminal growth rate and that is always set to a default of 4%. The terminal growth rate simply refers to the earnings rate we are expecting for the company in years 11 through 20. Now once again you can adjust this terminal growth rate or the years of terminal growth here within the settings and we always use a default discount rate of 12%. The discount rate simply defines the rate you were discounting future cash flows in order to produce a present value. And finally on the right side you'll notice a number for tangible book value. Once again this comes from the company's most recent full year financials and represents the book value minus intangible assets. Users have the option to check this box which would add that figure which is uh, presented to you on a per share basis to the fair value of the stock and you see that fair value down here reflected by the change by clicking that box. As with the other inputs, users can change this figure to a safer reflection of what they estimate the tangible book value to be. So the final fair value is the result of three components. The first is the growth value, and this represents the current earnings per share projected out at your growth rate over the next 10 years, and then discounted back to present values at the corresponding discount rate. This gives us, in our case, a growth value of $23.97. The second component is the terminal value, which further predicts the earnings going out for years 11 through 20 at our assumed terminal growth rate, again using the discount rate defined in our DCF calculator. These two values added together will produce a fair value for the stock. Should you check the box, to add the tangible book value to the fair value that will be included in this as well. So it's either going to be two components should this box be unchecked or all three components if it is checked. Below the fair value number you'll see a figure for a margin of safety. The margin of safety simply represents the discount that today's share price provides you compared to your discount cash flow estimate of that stock's fair value. Should you need help in determining various growth rates you want to assume for this stock, just below the calculator you will notice that we've compiled the 1-year, 5-year, and 10-year annual growth rates of revenue, EBITDA, earnings growth, free cash flow, and book value growth. The final component of the calculator is a reversed discount cash flow feature, which is found here on the right side of the DCF calculator. The reverse DCF will generate a growth rate for the next 10 years that would have to be met in order for today's price to be of fair value. You notice that the growth rate of the next 10 years box has disappeared when we click the reverse de discount cash flow side. So what this rate says is should earnings grow at this figured rate today's share price is roughly fairly valued. If we think earnings will grow in excess of this rate, then the stock can be thought to be undervalued. Should this growth rate be in excess of what we expect, the current share price is more than likely overvalued compared to the fair value of the stock.